And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren back with you here at Cross Timbers Farm. Welcome to Eighth Day Chronicles. It is a blusterous fall day here in the mountains. Uh, we've had some pretty breezy, windy conditions the last day or two. So uh, I hope the audio and my microphone, the windshields on them, I was working. So anyway, it's a beautiful day other than the wind. We had a frost this morning. Uh, pretty heavy frost our first frost of the year so and it's late September so um, winter's coming uh, like it or not here it comes uh, I love fall of the year uh, fall of the year is a, a fantastic time that I, I really enjoy and uh, I really love spring of the year and uh, probably my least favorite is 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 the dead of winter when it's zero and that uh, snow is blowing sideways and wind howling and zero degrees and I don't much like it also when it's 95 degrees and sweltering humidity either so I'm a spring and fall guy so and anyway it's all good uh, it's the day the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it so uh, it's all good life's good so anyway today uh, here on the farm I'm gonna be, I've been doing some fencing work around our chicken coop area uh, we've had a problem with the uh, the dairy goats uh, climbing and chewing all over our chicken coop uh, or both of them and it's gotten to the point that I had to do something about it so We've done some fencing there, and while while on the subject of fencing, um, always when you're, you're talking of electric fencing, the subject of chargers always seems to come up. And I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what we've done with our system, uh, and how it works for us, and and things that I might would do different or or might stay with. So um, I'm standing here right now in front of in front of one of our chargers and it is a Parmac solar pack Magnum 12 and we rely on solar powered fence energizers uh, really happy that we went that way we installed our very first uh, Parker McCrory or Parmac fence charger uh, in 2015 so that was seven years ago um, I've done a lot of research online and I'm I'm known for that I guess uh, you know you got to spend your money wisely and buy something that's gonna really benefit you and your farm and it has good longevity and a good service track record and things of that nature so I've done a lot of uh, research on the internet about fence chargers and specifically solar fence chargers we wanted to go with a fence charger or chargers plural that would uh, be reliable be durable be weatherproof and also when we have uh, storms roll through power outages things of that nature that our fences were not compromised by that power outage. So in light of that, we went with solar powered fence chargers. We also have an AC charger as a backup, and I'll get to that in a little bit, and it's a really good charger too. But uh, through all of my research about solar chargers, um, the Parmac, uh, MAG-12 solar powered uh, was at the top of the list it seemed like uh, so that's what we went with after a lot of research and we are super pleased with it so pleased that we have two of them we ran uh, the other one right across the way here for probably five years uh, and then we added this one 
So right now our farm is running two of these these Mag 12s by Parmac or Parker McCrory. Um, they're 12 volt. They run off of a 12 volt battery. This charger is all self-contained internal. You know, as far as the battery and the solar panel and the all the workings of it. Uh, we've modified how they run to our fences, but we've not modified anything on the chargers. They're they're as as from the factory, and there's really no need to do anything with them. They work as advertised. So. Um, this one, the, the Solar Pack 12, or the MAG 12, is a 3.1 joule. And it says on the, on the cover here, it's a 30 mile range. Now, when you're talking mile range, you're talking about one strand of, electric, of, of fencing that has absolutely no impedance, no nothing. Uh, in ideal perfect conditions one strand and it would push that that wave of energy I guess 30 miles uh, however uh, we use electric fence in here on our farm for our dairy goat herd and uh, I had an older gentleman tell me one time about fencing for goats he said he said son you want me to tell you how to know if your fence will contain goats and of course I smiled and said yeah tell me how and he said will your fence hold water because if it won't hold water it won't hold goats in <laughs> so uh, you know that was a, that was a, uh, a a good little joke but uh, it it was leading to the what you really need to keep goats in. Goats are really curious animals, and we run a lot of strands. Uh, a lot of folks that uh, run goats on their property or sheep, they have wove wire or fence wire, and I'm not a fan of it, never have been. Uh, a lot of farms you go to, you see the wove wire where the goats, they tend to want to climb on it, and it's just sagging, uh, predators dig under them. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of it. I am a fan of electric fencing. And one of our fences, the front pasture has high tensile. Uh, that we run uh, six strands. And the rest of our property is, is not high tensile, but it is 12 and a half gauge soft wire. But it's uh, the 12 and a half gauge soft wire is getting really hard to find anymore, that big a diameter. But uh, we run 12 and a half gauge soft wire on the rest of it, and we run about five strands with about four strands of bob wire in between all of it. So, but the electric strands are on insulators that sit out a couple of inches from the bob wire. So any animal that approaches that fence, they hit the electric well before they touch the bob wire so the bob wire is only in there as a strand between and you could actually just use smooth wire it, it doesn't have to be bob wire uh, we just used bob wire because we already had some up and for for other animals and just because it was easily available and we had it so uh, but the the other strands that are not electrified are there in between the electric strands just for a visible barrier because you take a goat and if it looks at the fence and it sees a hole big enough that it thinks he can get his head through he's going to try to go through it he thinks hey i can get my head through there then i can go through it if you put enough strands to where they look at it and go hmm I just don't think I can get my head through that without hitting that wire right there that like bites me really hard, then uh, we've had no issues. No issues whatsoever with, with goats breaching our fences. Knock on wood, I ain't saying we won't, but to this point we have not. So, and we've had, we've had them on the property for seven years. So uh, it can happen and, and probably will eventually at some point. But to this point, it's it's worked flawlessly. Uh, I think with, with goats, you need to run a really hot fence. Uh, I think if you, if you don't run a fence hot enough with it, I would say a minimum of 
7,000 volts going through it, minimum, uh, each strand. Preferably eight or nine, maybe even 10, uh, that you're, you're, you're probably not gonna be as happy with it. That fence needs to be hot enough that when a goat touches that fence, it leaves such an impression on it like, ouch, that hurt so bad, what was that? And usually they, they approach the fence sometimes minutes later, sometimes days later, and I've watched goats do it. They've been shocked once, and they think it was the fence that did it, but they're not real sure. And I just stand way back and watch, and they go to the fence again, and they reach out, and it's like they're really timid, but they want to see if that's what it was. And they reach out, and they touch it again with the end of their nose, and it lights them up, and they jump back, and they go, yep, that's what it was. And they don't mess with it no more. That's been our experience. Uh, we've had uh, dairy goat breeds and uh, meat goat breeds. We've had boars and kikos, and uh, as, as well as, as dairy goat breeds, oberhosleys and uh, alpines, but uh, and golden guernseys. But uh, usually one or two times, and they're done with it. If that fence is hot enough that it pops them so hard that it gets their attention and they do it one more time, sometimes it's only one time, but if they hit it the second time, we have found usually two times is about all it takes. Now, if you have a charger that's not putting out enough, enough voltage and is subpar, you might have goats challenge it. I want a fence that's hot enough that where a goat hits it once, maybe twice, and they don't challenge it no more because they're like, they go over to their buddies and the other does or bucks in the group and they go, ouch, that really hurt. Don't get near that. And the rest of them's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I tried to tell you not to touch it. <laughs> you know, so uh, a little fun there. But uh, what I'm getting at is a hot fence is really important for goats because goats are really curious animals and if you have a weak point in your fence they're going to find it and they're going to get out uh, but if you if you maintain your fence check your fences daily and maintain a really hot fence electric in my opinion i'm sure there's folks out there that's that's run wovar or, or field fence uh, for years and years and had excellent success and hey that is fantastic go with what works for you but what has worked for us on this farm has been electric fencing and, and we're really happy with it so uh, as I said our, our chargers are all solar powered except one and I'll get to that in a moment um, they're 12 volt these Parmac uh, mag 12s or solar pack 12s or 12 volt they have a, a, a 12 volt battery inside the housing here and this housing is totally waterproof it has a meter on the front and your hookups positive and negative here on the bottom um, one thing that I will discuss about fence chargers and it doesn't matter if it's an AC charger or a solar charger Okay, folks, one of the things that um, is important about any fence charger, and it doesn't matter uh, in, in what I've learned, whether it's a solar fence charger or an AC fence charger, is they're only as effective as your grounding or ground rods and your ground system. How Now, these are layman's terms, and I'm not an expert on fence chargers. I'm just a layman re relaying to you what we have learned and what works for us. A fence charger, an electric fence charger, basically works if you have an animal on the other side of your fence and he touches the fence. What delivers the voltage, the shock to that animal is when he touches that fence, his body is making the connection from the fence to the ground, okay? Once that electricity is able to make a circuit, that's when he feels the shock, okay? 
in order for your charger to work properly that something has to touch that fence the electricity has to flow through it back through the ground to your ground rods okay your ground rods are what will receive that current back to the charger to your to your negative connection and complete the circuit until something touches that wire and touches the ground um, then there's no there's no complete circuit the circuits only going and not making the circle the complete circle back to the charger that's why you can see songbirds and things like that we'll see them sitting on our fences and at first if you're unfamiliar with how electric fence charger works you're thinking how's that bird sitting on that fence line and not getting shot well it's because that bird is sitting on the fence line and nothing's touch he's not touching the ground he has to be on the touching the fence and the ground to make the circuit go that's when it would shock him uh, if I could levitate or something like that and stand here I could hold every one of these fence uh, wires and not feel anything but as soon as my foot hits the ground boom I'm getting it because it completes the circuit uh, something touching the wire and the ground is like the connection that connects the circuit for the shock so your charger is only as good as your ground rods if you're putting in a, a new charging system for electric fences do not skimp on ground rods for each of our chargers we have three six foot ground rods in the ground spaced about 10 yards apart and they're right under the edge of the fence here um, and they're connected right here to the negative it goes underground over to the first one and then it connects to it and it keeps right on going underground over to the second one and underground again over to the third one so we have really good ground rods in place we have three for this charger three for that charger so we have a total of six ground rods in to come to for our chargers and uh, before long we're going to be doing a fencing project in our back pasture and we're going to be using this this same we're going to purchase another one of these uh, parmac solar pack 12s to go back there and we'll put in three more ground rods back there and and connect them all um, your charger is only as good as your ground system so make sure you don't skimp on it and we purchased our ground rod system from ken cove um, matter of fact we purchased these chargers from ken cove uh, ken cove fencing supplies at kencove.com um, they they offer a ground rod package system that is fantastic they've i'm assuming they probably put this grounding system together and offer it as a package and that's the way to go you get this package and everything you need is there in one box you got your grounding rods and your your uh, connectors to connect your wire to your grounding rods and wire back to your charger so it, it, it works phenomenal and it's it's actually probably uh, economical and time consuming because you're not having to order different parts but anyway you can get it in a package and that's what when we ordered this charger uh, we ordered the Parmac solar pack 12 and the grounding rod kit together uh, one is really no good without the other so uh, they offer a great package for that but anyway make sure you got a good ground system your grounding rods are good and the the worse your soil is and the drier it is the better your grounding rods need to be uh, to conduct that electricity so uh, we're really happy with these and you know uh, the one issue that we we have had and it doesn't happen very often maybe we've been using these for seven years and i think of two different times we've had to do this but after the first time it taught me a lesson we uh, a couple years ago we went through a period of about a week and a half to two weeks where we literally had no sun it was cloudy every day 
uh, it was it was cool out. I, th I think it was in late fall or early winter. Uh, we had you know at night down well below freezing in the in the twenties, and during the day it just was no sun. The clouds stayed out. I came out one morning, and our fence was dead. The charger was not working. Um, so I investigated and looked at the fence and everything to make sure there was not an issue with something that had grounded out our fence and everything looked good. Um, I pulled the cover off here and the cover comes off of these where you can access the battery. And I accessed the battery in there, uh, got a battery tester and that battery was dead. There was no power in it. And it was simply because this charger had ran 24 hours a day night and day for almost a week with no sun and it had not been able to charge and what this ambient light there was was not enough to even get it close to being charged so uh, uh, it put us in a little bit of a bind for a few days because we were like our fences are dead and we had animals in there and we needed this this charge so I set out to remedy that situation we had to have some kind of backup system and what we did is we installed inside the barn a Ken Cove AC fence charger um, and we ran it out to both of these pastures and these fences and connected them uh, to where we could turn on we could turn these off disconnect them via some pole switches and turn on the electric AC charger uh, for power and the Ken Cove one we have is about a six maybe six and a half to seven joule unit and it will power both pastures it is a really hot charger and I really like it but it's a it's it's hardwired AC powered uh, but we have the option now if we go uh, a week or longer without any sun and our solar chargers get really weak or go dead, we can disconnect them and plug in uh, to the power grid and power our fences if need be. But we're really happy with these and uh, these Parmac uh, Solar Pack 12s, and I'll give you a close-up look at them. They have a, they have a meter uh, on the front that you can see really easily. Every, every morning when I come out to the farm to, to take care of the livestock and all, before I ever even go into the barn, I'm out to make a trip by each one of these chargers and take a glance at my meter. That meter will tell me if I have something wrong with my chargers or not. It's that, it, it's that accurate, I have found out. If my meter is down into the yellow or way low into the green, I've got an issue, and it's usually something with my fence. There's been a tree limb fall on it, uh, there's been deer jumped it and, and, and tangled it in against the T-post or something like that. Uh, and we do have a problem here with deer trying to jump our fences and they don't go through it because it's so hot. They, but we still have some that try to jump it and get into the pastures and we've had issues where they've actually, while they were going over it, hit the top strand and knocked it down and entangled it in against the T-post or something like that. So uh, a quick glance of that meter will let me know right quick if I got an issue and usually if it's down, way down low, and we've had sun and I know the charging's not an issue, I start walking the fence and usually I find where something's, something's grounding it against the, the metal or the, something of that nature. So um, I could uh, give these Parmac Solar Pack 12, Mag 12 fence, solar fence chargers two thumbs up. We are so happy with them and, and uh, matter of fact we're going to be buying another one soon. They're a little on the pricey side but in this instance I think you get what you pay for. These are fantastic chargers uh, and you don't have to worry about if your power goes out and your power's out for two or three days due to a storm or whatever uh, your fences is going to keep clicking right along. Okay, we're, I'll give you an up close view of our of this charger and its basic functions. Um, as you can see, it has the solar panel mounted on top, 
and uh, it mounts at an angle. As you can see the back, we have it mounted to a, to a post uh, about, you know, chest high off the ground. And as you can see the, the meter, our fence is working really good. This is our back pasture and this one, this, this charger right here is charging five strands of electric over about four and a half acres. And you can see it's got juice to spare. It's working really well. Uh, we have our positive that comes down to a pole switch and then comes right on down and goes underground and it goes underground right over here to where the gate is and if you look closely I don't know if you can see it but you, the, the wire comes right out of the ground comes up and comes right over right there that's where it's connected to our fence and as you can see each strand has a jumper wire going between them to, to hop every one of them okay the negative or the ground wire here right here the black one comes out and comes over to us to a switch a knife switch goes down underground and it runs right underground over here to the first grounding rod and as you can see it has the the connector there the wire to it it goes from that grounding rod for about 10 yards over to a second grounding rod the wires connected to about 10 more yards over to the third one and we leave these sticking up we put them really close up to the fence so they don't get hit by a lawnmower or something like that or nobody trips over them. we put them right up almost under the fence and we just weed eat around them uh, when we're when we're weed eating the fence rows that's the grounding system this uh, this charger works like I said we're it's it's worked flawless this one is about uh, three to four years old and it still has the original battery in it the original 12 volt battery from Parmac and it shows no loss of power uh, we run these things 24 7 and it runs all the time um, unless you know we have a bunch of days of, of no sun then we would consider turning it off and turning on the AC but this one has run flawless okay our second charger is right over here and it actually charges our front pasture that's about two and a half acres okay this is our original parmac solar pack 12. this one's about seven years old and the solar panel on top is a little different this is a little older model uh, they've put a different little different design of a solar panel on the newer ones and a little different meter but this one is like i said about seven and a half years it's been in use we've replaced the battery one time about two years ago uh, the battery just got to where it would not hold a charge very long so i ordered a new battery from uh, ken cove and installed in it about two years ago and it's run flawless ever since it's the same uh, type charger the the window here has gotten kind of cloudy but i can still see it and it's fully charged it's the same charger basically but however we done this one a little different with the with the uh, pole switches to where we could switch this to ac power as you can see the hot wire comes out comes over to a pole switch right here and this is a dual pole switch right now you can see it's up and it's hooked to the solar on the lower end is where the hot comes off the AC out of the barn okay the negative over here are the ground comes off to a pole a double pole 
and it's turned up now for the solar and there's two wires coming off this one you can see the the uh, the insulated wire is the one that runs underground back to the AC charger the the naked wire is the one that runs to the ground wires it goes to the ground rods I'm sorry goes underground over to ground rod number one 10 yards down the way to ground rod number two 10 yards down the way to ground rod number three this one powers the high tensile this solar charger here uh, and like I said it's only powering about two and a half maybe three acres and it's worked phenomenal this charger has been up out in the weather out here for over seven years and we've replaced the battery one time it has worked flawless okay if we have an issue with no sun and we need to turn on the electric uh, the AC unit okay uh, we go I'll give you a quick tour of that okay as I said before this dual pole one there's a hot wire right here uh, here and a, and a negative over here and they both run underground over to the barn okay if you can see I've got a I've got some uh, a pipe here mounted to the barn it goes right up and through a hole in the barn right there and goes right in that's where those two wires are going into the barn at now let's take a step quick step into the barn and I'll show you okay here we are inside the barn and as you can see way up high we're inside a stall on the corner of the barn we have our Ken Cove uh, 110 volt plug-in electric fence charger mounted in here with the two wires that come out and go through the wall of the barn out to those uh, dual poles mounted on that pole where the solar charger is okay we just have a, a plug ran around and right over to where we can plug it in this is about a uh, four jewel I think maybe five I'm not real sure output charger this Ken Cove charger works fantastic it runs about eight to nine thousand volts around uh, both both pastures this one AC uh, charger will do both pastures so we have it run to both and when we do the fencing on the back I think it'll power it as well with no problem this is a really good charger we've been really happy with it it's worked flawless um, but we have it actually mounted inside a barn stall here and that's why we have it up so high so the goats or nothing can reach it as you can see right there it is way up next to the ceiling and man does it stink in this barn it's uh if you've ever been around dairy goats uh you realize that fall's breeding season and your bucks will stink something terrible love is in the air so to speak here's two of our bucks they're looking over the gate uh, these are purebred Oba Hosleys. Uh, and they are in full rut. We're not ready for them to be with our girls yet, so that's why they're in here, so, and not out. So, uh, anyway, boy, I'm telling you, if you've never been in a, around a dairy farm, a dairy goat farm, uh, during the fall of the year when the, uh, the breeding season is on and how stinky these bucks can get Whew. it's ripe in here <laughs> so let's get out of here for, for right now wow that odor and that buck smell inside the barn is strong susan's gonna have to put up some uh wick deodorizers in there or something i'm telling you when uh, dairy goat bucks come in season uh when it's breeding season they don't come in season but when the does start coming in season fall rolls around 
and those bucks uh, they start doing their thing and getting ready so to speak to attract the ladies and man sakes alive whoo the smell is strong so but any event uh, that's our electric fence set up uh, it, it has worked for us flawless we have no issues with any of it uh, matter of fact if I were to build another fence uh, and start over I do the exact same thing we're really happy as you can see part of our fences right here this is our middle pasture and you can see the, the how the fences are, are done we have the barbed wire but the electric sits out a lot further than any strands of barbed wire so they hit the electric first uh, we've literally had no goats get into the barbed wire because the electric sets out further and they touch it first and the barbed wire is just kind of there for a, a visual barrier uh, you could use smooth wire you could use any kind about real about any kind of wire you just need something through there for a visual uh, deterrent to say hey I can't get my head through there uh, without hitting that hot wire so it's worked really well we're really happy with it we've built good fences and good fence corners with good heavy duty post these wood posts right here are actually if you can see them they're they're monsters they are actually a true six by six locust uh, post woods grown yellow locust post those things will be in the ground and be there for years and years uh, so we're, we're real happy with them but any in any event uh, back to the, the fence chargers we are we are really happy with this Parmac um, solar pack 12 charger matter of fact we're going to be adding another one back there soon uh, so we will have a total of three of them on the farm but uh, weather proof um, I just can't say enough good things about them uh, the Parmac has done us so well that I would not hesitate to buy another one and as a matter of fact if something happened to this one right here today uh, I would probably be on the phone ordering another one just like it they've they've been very good to us and done very well for us so uh, thanks for being with us today on the farm uh, a quick look at our Parmac solar pack 12 fence chargers uh, if, if you're in the market for a solar powered fence charger one that's hot enough to uh, deter goats I think you can get by with a lot, lot lower power with horses uh, maybe even sheep but when you've got goats or I think maybe even cattle needs a pretty hot one uh, this solar pack 12 if you're going the solar route by Parker McCrory uh, or so-called Parmac I think you can't go wrong they're great fence chargers so in any event thanks for being with us today we really appreciate you being with us uh, thanks for stopping by 8th Day Chronicles and, and visiting with us today we appreciate you being with us and we uh, appreciate you stopping by our channel each day and checking out our videos and if you haven't done so we'd sure appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to our channel God bless and have a good day.